Hello, and welcome to another lesson from MathForBreakfast.com. Why the sweaty brow? Because we've been factoring for a long time, haven't we? Factor out a common monomial. Factor out a trinomial. A couple lessons on that. Factor out a difference, or factor the difference of squares. A couple lessons on that. Now we've got factor the sum or difference of cubes. A couple lessons on this. I should put a part one here because I'm sure there'll be a part two. Again, merchandising. You always want to go for two parts. Well, here's the deal. Yes, there are many different tri uh, tricks. I don't want to say tricks. There are many different techniques that need to be applied when factoring. But again, as you've seen, they're basically simple processes. If not, you can play the lessons over and over that you have taken from mathforbreakfast.com or seen on YouTube, right? And in this case, factoring the sum or difference of cubes, it's going to use a pattern, just like it did when we did the sum or difference of squares. All right? So you want to build so that you can go from, oh, my gosh, to, oh, my goodness, yes, I can do that. All right? And that's what I want you to be able to do here. First of all, we've got to figure out what the sum or difference of cubes is. All right? So just like we did in factoring the difference of squares, I'd highly recommend go back, look at those lessons on factoring the difference of squares to, to pick up some techniques and, and tips there. But uh, just like we did in one of those lessons, first, um, what is a cube? Okay, and I'm going to say numerically. All right, well, uh, because the numerical cubes are something like this. One is the same thing as one times one times one. The same thing, three times multiplied together, that's a one. One is the cube. Um, the next one would have to be eight because 2 times 2 times 2, the same number multiplied with itself three times gives me 8. So 8 is the cube. Next one, what is it? Yes, 27, because it's going to be 3 times 3 times 3. All right? Same number all multiplied together three times, got me 27. 27 is the cube. The next one would have to be 4 times 4 times 4, so it gives me 64. And then 5 times 5 times 5 gives me uh, 125. All right, so I'm just going to put here the 64 came from a 4, the 125 came from 5, 3, three fives multiplied together, the uh, 6 multiplied together 3 times gives me 216. All right, so those are probably the, enough to, to get you through your factoring the sum or difference of cubes problems. Uh, so numerically, if you have a number that can be gotten by multiplying a, the same number with itself 3 times, then that number, the 8 in this case, is a perfect cube. All right, number two. Um, for variables, all right, um, cubes have exponents that can be divided by Three! Exclamation point! Because I'm excited! They can be divided by three. Why three? Well, I have three twos all multiplied together here. I have three threes or three fours or three fives. So three makes sense, right? That's probably the number you'd want to be able to divide your exponent by. Example here, um, x to the third. Split that up into x times x times x because three can be divided by three. Three divided by three equals one. And I put that 1 over here. 1, 1, 1. Okay? Um, y to the 30th. Well, 30 can be divided by 3 equals 10. So when I split this up, it's y to the 10th times y to the 10th times y to the 10th. There we go. All right? And, and etc. If you can divide the exponent by 3, then this term, this y to the 30th, this x to the third, each of those, or whatever each one you're looking at, is a perfect cube because the exponent can be divided by three evenly to get a 10 or a five or whatever. And then you are going to want to do the splitting later in the problem. So kind of get a look at, good look at that. Uh, third thing here, all right, we've addressed what a cube is numerically or in terms of variables. And now finally, a sum, that means plus. And a difference, that means minus. And that's great because you've already learned that in your past mathematical experience. Sum means add them up. 
Difference means subtract them. Yep, that's it. Same thing here. Learning nothing new. That's great because it makes learning this lesson a lot easier. All right, factoring the sum or difference of cubes, part one. We know what a cube is. We know what a sum or difference is. Let's see what the tool is to get us there. I'm erasing. You're not. Keep your notes, because they're free. Mine are expensive, because I need to buy more whiteboard to be able to do this lesson, or I have to erase. B, the cube pattern. As it was in my factoring the difference of squares lessons, I called it the square pattern. And again, told you not to tell anybody to save you an embarrassing experience. Same thing here, the cube pattern, not well known. In fact, this is the first time it's ever been iterated, utterated, uttered in public. And it didn't do it very well either. So the cube pattern, try not to tell too many people that term, but do use it. A cubed, plus or minus, meaning you're gonna have one or two of those sign, one or the other sign, but this applies to both case, cases. A cubed plus or minus B cubed becomes, now let's start factoring it. Well, A still a plus or minus. So in other words, whatever this sign was, if it was a plus, keep the plus. So I'm going to put same. If it was a minus, keep a minus, all right? Now this is an A and this is a B. It wasn't A cubed, now it's just an A. If it was a B cubed, now it's just a B. We'll figure all that out, don't worry. And then there's another part to the pattern here, here, uh, also a squared minus plus. Ooh, what's going on here? The opposite, OPP, the opposite sign. And then a B, and then plus, that's always, always plus, and then B squared, all right? So now I have square product and square. That's what I'm going to point out here. I have square, product, square. That's a product. I'm looking at a new pattern here. If I have cubed, plus or minus cubed, then it's non-cubed, plus or minus non-cubed, and then square the first guy, multiply the two of them, the a times the b, and square the last one. Here we have the same signs. Here we have the opposite signs. Here, we always have a plus sign. A little memorization going on here. Just like when you're playing Guitar Hero, as you learned in my prior lessons, eventually you play the song over and over and over, you memorize the pattern, you start getting your score to go way up. Same thing here, memorize the pattern. And the way you memorize patterns in, in math classes is to do lots of problems. So let's look at a problem here. Uh, we have got an example here. The example is factor. And I'm going to say, I want to factor x to the sixth, and I want it to be plus um, 8y to the third. Okay? Super. I've got a problem like that. It says factor. So when I do step zero, read and look. When I look, I see this is a cube. Exclamation mark. Because this can be divided by three. 6 can be divided by 3 equals 2. And I see this is a cube, exclamation point, because 8 equals 2 times 2 times 2, and y to the third, um, in this case, the 3 on the y to the third can be divided by 3, and that equals 1. All right? So the exponent can be divided by 3, gives me a 2. I'm going to use that later, and exclamation point. Um, the 8 is 2 times 2 times 2, I'm going to use that later, and the 3 divided by 3 gives me a 1, I can use that later. Okay, okay, here we go. Step 1, split the cubes. You know what, if you saw my lesson on factoring the difference of squares, we did the same thing. We split it. Let's see what that looks like. When I have x to the 6th plus 8y to the 3rd, well, that splits up into x squared times x squared times x squared, because when I took 6 divided by 3, I got 2. There's my 2. And then this y to the, 8y to the third is 2 times y, or 2y times 2y times 2y, because 8 is 2 times 2 times 2, and y cubed is y times y times y. Okay? We split the cubes. 
just like when we did the squares. Finally, step, I'm going to write this up here, step two, we only have two steps, use the cube pattern, exclamation point. Well, here's how it goes, x to the sixth plus 8y to the third. I do my splitting again, this is just for your notes, x squared times x squared times x squared, and then I do this splitting, 2y times 2y times 2y, all right? That equals, and I follow my pattern. Well, if this is a plus, this is a plus. So I put my parentheses here, this is a plus, keep the sign, keep the sign the same, same. All right, now I'm gonna have a trinomial, and the pattern says, over here, this is going to be opposite, OPP, opposite, so this will be a minus, all right? And the last one, yes, is always a plus, always, there we go. Now I take this splitting stuff I've used and I just put it together. X squared and this Y, 2Y over here, 2Y, all right? So I take the uncubed versions and put them here and here. So x squared goes here, and the 2y goes there. Excellent. Now, I follow my pattern, square product square. I take this x squared and I square it, giving me x to the fourth. All right, so this becomes x squared squared equals x to the fourth. Product, when I take x squared times 2y, I get 2x squared y. That's the product of these two guys together product. All right, I'm going to put product here of um, x squared times 2y equals 2x squared y. And then finally, I square. Square, product, square. I take my last term here and I square it, giving me 4y to the fourth. And that's because 2y, sorry, 4y squared um, because 2y squared equals 4y squared. All right, another lesson on that, um, you've done earlier in your math lessons, uh, how to square something like that. So, I kept the sign the same from here, following the pattern. I changed the sign, opposite, the last one always a plus, and then I have square product square. Take this squared, x to the fourth. Take the product of x squared and 2y, I get 2x squared y, and I square my 2y, and I get 4y squared. Follow the pattern. Of course, you want to box this up. I run out of room, so I'm not going to do it here. But if you follow the pattern, split up your cubes, this and this, square, product, square of these two terms with the keep the sign here, opposite sign there, and always a plus, you can do these problems. Yes, it's a little involved because it's a lot more to memorize. Keep working them, keep doing them. I have another example coming up and you can do it.